Hey, this is attorney Elizabeth Potts Weinstein. And today what we're gonna do is a first look at the new search system the United States Patent and Trademark Office has for doing a trademark search. So I've done a tutorial about how to do a trademark search using the old system. So now we're gonna look at the new system. And at first I was like, oh, I hate everything new, <laughs> um, you know. You know, I'm old enough to, to do, have that kind of attitude about things, but there's actually some really, really nice features about this new system. And this is what the trademark office examiners is gonna be using, so you need to be using it too. So let's get into this system and how it works. So if you're gonna be filing a trademark, first you need to do a trademark search. And really you should be doing this even if you're going to not file a trademark, but you're gonna be using something in your business to promote your products or services and to associate your products or services with the source of it with your business. Now, uh, this video is not going over all the aspects of doing trademark search, because some of it is just gonna be about using Google and, and such. But this is gonna be just about doing the trademark search in the database of the United States Patent and Trademark Office. This database has all the trademarks that are registered, as well as expired trademarks, canceled trademarks, abandoned trademarks, applications that haven't been registered, everything that is in the database you get to see, okay? So let's go ahead and find it. If you go to the USPTO.gov, you go to the trademark pull down menu and it says search our trademark database and you click on that. And then now it comes up with the new system. They have their own tutorials that you can totally watch or obviously you're always watching this one and that can be a great idea to recommend watching their tutorials. And then you click on this button to go into the trademark search system. So this is a new system that actually is kind of modern, which is nice. Their old system was like so old. I mean, I kind of liked it, but I'm also old. Okay. so. They, they, it is having, this has a thing that right now is talking about how it has problems interacting with their old databases. And so this is something that's important to remember anytime you're dealing with the government <laughs> is they have all this old information, all kinds of old databases, and they don't always interact perfectly. So everything in here isn't perfect. If you find something, you'd also want to bring up in TSDR and I'm going to show you what that is and what I'm talking about. So let's just go in here and start doing some searches. So let's just search some like giant brands. Okay. Let's search Amazon. All right. Let, we're going to hit basic. We're going to find out what expert is later. All right. Let's just put, hit Amazon and, oh, then you have to hit the little, um, magnifying glass search thing to have it go. Okay, so Amazon has 9,000 results, all right? Now, let's look over at all the different, and you can see Amazon, Amazon. I mean, these are all, like, a lot of these are actually Amazon, but a lot of these are other companies that Amazon has bought their trademark or whatever, so Amazon can have the only one, okay? So, tons of them in here. Let's look at the side, though. This is the thing that I think is really important. So there's a filter for the status. This means, does this trademark actually exist anymore or not? Live means, yes, it exists. This includes trademarks that are final trademarks, which means registered. Pending are applications that haven't been granted yet. And then dead means it no longer exists, it's canceled or abandoned, whatever. That doesn't matter for you right the second which one happened. So do I recommend just doing live or doing dead? I recommend to do both. And the reason is, is that you want to know if there are dead trademarks because those companies may still exist. They may have let their trademark expire, but if they still exist, their use in under common law can be a problem for you is the short version of that. So you want to know about that. All right. If they are already exist and they have the same name as your company, it's going to be a problem for you. People are going to be searching. They're going to find them instead of you. You know, you want to know if that exists. So that's an important thing to do. The next thing it's, is, do we, can we can you sort this based upon all kinds of different factors, which we're not going to do right now. I, I actually haven't really used that, but you can sort it in based upon whether or not you want to um, have only in certain like have the order of classes which is the product or service category and we're going to talk a little bit more about that serial number means if it's a registered trademark and application it has a serial number if you put in an order then it'll be oldest to youngest or youngest to oldest and then obviously you can do an alphabetical order or not i don't actually ever do that but you can totally do that there. Let's go though, you, and you also can change the display. So this right now is in like cards. So the cool part about cards is you can see a little bit of information about each one, including the logo. You can change it to be a bullet point list. You, in here, you can still see the logos, which is really nice. But if it's more things on the screen, I kind of like that better. Or you can have it just be a list list that fits tons of stuff in the screen. So this can be really good if you're just gonna be scrolling down. They also have this color-coded, dead or live, registered, pending, abandoned, like that's actually really helpful so you can just visually scan things down. So let's go back to having it be in cards and let's hit expert, okay? So expert adds some more 
things that you can filter. And this is so helpful, okay? So the first thing is the class filter. This is gonna be the thing that you're gonna probably use, all right? The classes are the categories of product or service, okay? So this is Amazon, so this is gonna be about selling products for the most part. So I'm gonna pick a, let's say class nine, which electrical and scientific apparatus is, okay? I have this thing called coordinated click. So let's click class nine and you'll see what happens. All right, you see how when I click class nine, it also kind of shadow clicked a whole bunch of other things. That's because those classes are coordinated. This is huge. This is a huge thing that actually makes me like <laughs> this system. So one thing that could happen is, is let's say you file for a trademark in class nine, like class nine could be like uh, downloadable computer software. So like, let's just say you file for downloadable computer software and there's nobody else using that same name in class nine. So you're thinking, oh, I'm good. Ah, that's not how the trademark office looks at it. They look at whether or not customers will be confused about that use. And there's a lot of businesses who have businesses in a class nine thing, a downloadable computer software, who also have something in non-downloadable computer software or all kinds of other categories, actually. And those categories, those classes tend to go together. Then the trademark office has determined they are coordinated. So they're gonna be doing this kind of a search where they look at these other classes and now you get to see what classes they look at. This is a huge, huge thing and I'm so happy about it obviously. So for example, if it's in class nine, another one that I already knew went with it is advertising and business, which is class 35. We got education and entertainment in 41. There's certification marks and stuff, which we're not going to go into right now. Computer scientific, telecommunication stuff. Like there's a lot of things that totally make sense. Toys and sporting goods. So here could be a thing. You have a downloadable computer software. Let's say it's a game, right? Well, toys can go with that, right? The merch for the game. And those categories seem very different. Software is very different than a toy. However, the, a lot of times the same company sells both. And now we get to kind of see inside the trademark office's head of what they put together. So you can do a much more sophisticated search, especially based on what they do. So let's look at what you actually get when you're doing these searches. So obviously Amazon, let's just click on the first one here. Oh, this is so great. I love this so much. Okay. So I, it opens up two things at once. I, I don't know why it's doing that. But so what it, when you click on this, it actually opens up the TSDR file, which is so helpful to y'all. So you don't have to go find it yourself. TSDR is the database with all the data in it. And I recommend that people go into this and pull the file on any potential trademark on their own application, as well as any trademark they think that it might conflict with. So you can see, actually see what's going on. You can see all, everything that's ever been filed on it. It's really kind of neat. I mean, I'm a lawyer, so I'm kind of nerdy about these things, but it actually is very, very helpful. So this is one of Amazon's trademarks and it actually is a logo, right? It's not just a word, the word Amazon. It's actually got the little shopping cart and the swishy arrowy thing, all right? They, this was filed back a few years ago and we can actually see information about it. So what's the product or service? A gigantic list of stuff in class nine. It's all software, mobile application software, you know, TV shows, stream, TV shows that you can download, all these things. These are all downloadable things. Streaming is actually in a different class. Their basis information, we can see that. I know this is very nerdy, so you're probably gonna know what I'm talking about. Who owns it? Amazon Technologies Incorporated. Really large corporations like Amazon have multiple entities and their intellectual property will be owned by a separate entity than the rest of the business. And then they'll do licensing internally. Uh, it's It actually can be a really great way to manage income and, and to separate things out and also manage risk, but you probably aren't doing that yet <laughs> in your business. It's like the next level of things. You can see who the attorney is, if someone's representing themselves, which is actually very helpful. If you want to contact somebody, this is where you would get that information. And you can also see the prosecution history, but typically I would click on the word documents so you can see that. This is everything that was ever filed. So we can all go all the way back to see back when they originally filed what was what did they file back way back in the day? What were all the times that they proved their use? Let's look at their specimen from 2018. What did they submit as their specimen? Oh, look, it's these, some weird, oh, so this is like Amazon apps. This is their their apps that they had back in 2018. Oh, look, it's their old logos. They, had, they owned Whole Foods back then? I forgot when they bought Whole Foods. There's the Amazon. That, so I guess this, particular trademark is for what that little button was when you clicked on it. 
back then. I'm sure it's different now because they change these things all the time. And then you can see, you know, what they originally filed, how many times they extended, did they get any office actions? So they got an office action back way back in when they were filing this 2015 where they had to change their identi identification of goods this is a really good way where to to actually drill down to see did they have any problems with other trademarks they did in here but you'll see oh well if did they get rejected because some other trademark then you can look up that trademark you can really go down a rabbit hole and get a, tons of information so that's what i recommend doing if you find something obviously you're not getting a trademark for amazon because because selling trademarks but anyway you so don't do that but the idea is for whatever thing that you're thinking about trademarking you can find that in here so let's start putting in some other things let's oh it actually keeps a record of your searches oh my gosh i do actually do like this new system let's put in oak tree and then let's just put oak oak and then we're going to refine it by we're going to put something in here so let's put podcast Okay, let's say you have a podcast and you're, it's going to be called like the Oak something, whatever, I don't know, podcast. Okay, and so we click on that. Are there anything, are there any podcasts that use the word Oak in them? Okay, because Oak is the most innovative part of your name of your podcast. And here you can see all kinds of different things that are in this area. So by the way, podcasts are usually in class nine, which is downloadable digital media kind of files, but it could also be in streaming of audio materials on the internet, which is class 38 could be entertainment services, which is class 41. You can see podcasts can go in a lot of different categories. It depends on how you're monetizing it. depends on if it's downloadable or streaming. A lot of times podcasts are both. So that's why you'll see things in a lot of different classes. Okay. And there's a whole lot of different ones that have the word Oak. Now you can see, I, I, once I get down to past here, then you're just like, what, how are this Oak even in here? It's question X is a trademark. Ah, because the owner is dark Oak press. So they're putting, looking for oak anywhere in it. So this can be an issue if the word oak, obviously the word oak is not like, like you might have something in here. It's about trees. Like it's literally the business is about oak trees, you know? So not always, it's not going to, like once you get scrolled down a little bit, things are become less and less relevant. <laughs> okay. It's mostly going to be the stuff on the very, very top. Okay. And then you can see over here, he has the coordinated things, which is going to be really, really helpful for you. It means more stuff is going to come up. Let's unclick dead. So we get rid of all the dead ones. All right. So now we just have the ones that are live. They're either trademarks that have been issued, which means registered or trademark applications that are pending, which is obviously pending because I just said the word pending. So we got Live Oak University, Foggy Oak Fairy Tales, The Curse of Oak Island, OH. Oh, because it's Oak Hills Church. And then Oak Hills Church, OHA, Oak Hill Advisors, and then Oak Intelligent Company. You, you can't, then we're saying we're getting like not rant, not relevant things. So then you will look at, in your case, you probably don't have a podcast just called Oak. It's probably called Oak, blah, 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 right? So you'd actually drill down is, is, the rest of the thing that you are going to trademark similar or not similar to these things, you know, like live Oak university is probably going to be different from the thing that you're trademarking. So let's put another one in here that is also going to have some coordinating things. Um, let's put consulting. Okay. Oak consulting. So you can see here it is, and we're actually not going to put class nine. We're going to put consulting in class 30. Uncheck that and class 35. So you can see class 35, which is advertising and business has a whole bunch of other classes. These are all like service classes that it goes together. And there's all kinds of consultants who have the word Oak in the name of it. This is a very, you know, a, a field that has a lot of Oak things in it. There's only live things. So one thing to remember when you're doing the search is whatever you clicked over here in the side, is going to stay clicked. So if you click to filter for a class, you have to unclick that and click the new class. So a very important thing. All right. So here we're got, we're getting all kinds of things about, this is actually Oak products. So products made of Oak in class 31. I'm actually going to pull that up and see what their goods and services are. Oak products. Ah, interesting. So 
This business has, it's called Creative Oak and they have two classes. One is class 31 about products made of wood and the other is class 40, which is consulting about alcoholic beverages and stuff like that. So you might not think those things that go together that someone who sells products of made of wood would also be doing consulting, but some businesses do have things that are in multiple classes like that, that are seemingly unrelated. So now let's unclick the class and let's put in here, instead of coaching, let's put clothing. All right. So clothing is in class. If you hover over the class numbers, you can, it'll come up with the general category for it. So clothing is in class 25, which I already knew, but you can also see it's in, they're also checking 35, which is advertising and business, certification marks, jewelry, leather goods, fabrics, computer and scientific, which is weird. So clothing, tends to also be in the same, be the same kind of company that has sells jewelry, leather goods, fabrics. Those things make sense to me. They also put it advertising and business and computer scientific. I feel like those are, they always check those and they're like always having those be coordinated. So we get a bunch of different businesses that have logos or just the word marks that are, have the word oak in them that are in clothing. You can see there's different kinds of descript descriptions for that, but you can see here, Mossy Oak, let's pull this one up. And Mossy Oak has, is about animals. Pet clothing is in a different class than human clothing. This is all pet stuff. So interestingly enough, I clicked this for clothing, but this is, which class is this under? 5, 18, 20, 28, 31. 5, 18, yeah. So because leather goods is is shadow clicked as being a coordinated class, they display this one. Probably most of the case, if it's human clothes and pet clothes, it doesn't go together. But there are companies that sell both human clothes and pet clothes. So it is important to know, right? And I would always want to check, are they also selling the other things? So whenever it has it where it is like a all caps like this, like this is just the word mark, but then it has like a graphic this here with the skull, this is a logo mark. So those are different kind of trademarks. Okay. But here you can very easily visually see which one we're talking about. All right. Again, this is attorney Elizabeth Potts Weinstein. If you have any questions about using the new trademark search system, feel free to ask them in the questions below and I'll try to point you in the right direction. This is a brand new system and I'm still kind of discovering new things about it, new good ways to use it. So I probably will come up with updated videos in the future once I've used this application a lot more. Thumbs up if you found this video helpful. Subscribe for more videos like this. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye-bye.